Hey everybody, it's Uncle Grumpy. Jump on in here while I walk to the Capitol. Okay, I see some of you jumping in. Hey everybody, good morning, it's Uncle Grumpy. As you can see, I'm at the Capitol. Just got here, I'm walking. The, uh, we, get, we have to park way back in the back 40 to leave all these empty spots for the senators and, and uh, other members that didn't come in. Leave them empty in case they decide to come to work. Anyway, uh, I'm headed up here to meet with Norma. We're trying to find some uh, legislators to help with this, some of what's going on in this unity plan um, or skinnity plan. Uh, we've got issues with the caregiver part. Uh, it doesn't do much good to have a caregiver that can't grow at his own house. Um, we've got serious problems with all the language in 1030. As we talked about yesterday, we need everybody to be on top of that today. Call them, tell your senator the language from 1030 needs to die. It's still floating around and it could pop up at any time. So we have to put an emphasis on killing the language from 1030. All right, there, there it is. Isn't that pretty? All right, so I'm gonna get in here Look, we've got almost 70,000 between patients and businesses. We've got 70,000 licenses out there. 70,000. I think if uh, we can get 20% of that 70,000 to call this week, we can change these people's minds. So uh, keep that in mind. It doesn't take everybody in the state it takes a few of us to be active so get active and help out and make some phone calls 70,000 people working within this medical marijuana program we need those people to be active now so we can stop these people here from uh, squashing the program or leaving it uh, neutered for lack of a better term I don't feel like being neutered all right folks I'm headed in I'll talk to you in a little bit. Stay grumpy. Okay, folks. It's Uncle Grumpy. I'm back. And no silly hats this time. Sorry about the music. I was unaware the music was going on. Um, so uh, we're outside the Rules Committee. Norma is doing a, a, a something else right now. Uh, watch her tonight. She should be on the news. She's doing an interview. Uh, interview with Channel 9, I think. Anyway, we're outside the Rules Committee. Part of what they're moving through here right now is uh, HB 2601. Now, that is a that is a bill that will allow cities and uh, to or counties to allow you to exceed the grow limits in 788. Uh, I see some of you just jumping in. I think I got a slow connection. I'll start over. No silly hats this time. Sorry, folks. And Norma will be over here in just a minute, but I wanted to get you guys up to speed uh, on what's going on. Since you didn't hear it in the video, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware there was music playing. 2601, H, uh, HB 2601, House Bill 2601, being heard right now in the Rules Committee, is the one that will allow uh, counties to let you exceed the limit. Uh, the grow limit. We all know in 788 it said that you could grow six adult and six uh, seedlings and that cities and counties could not restrict, they could not lower that number but they could increase that number. Now that's relevant as Norma was saying earlier, If you could, for those of you who couldn't hear it, uh, she has a, a friend who had a PSA, that's a cancer screening test. Uh, that was a 5.1 and a month of Rick Simpson oil and uh, it was uh, 1.5 so you know it's gonna save his life that he had some Rick Simpson oil but to do that he had to have what he grew 
what his wife grew and what some friends grew. So he needed a lot more than what he could legally grow. So this would allow that. Now it does allow for a $250 uh, fee for them to charge, but it doesn't make that mandatory. So as we were saying in the video, and that's some of what we were talking about, we need to get more involved locally. Um, if enough of us out there get involved, get involved in our local governments, as we as we do in this here, yes. uh, like we do with this, we can make changes at a local level. It, it, all it takes is you and a few neighbors, um, you know, and you can really sway your city council, your county commission, whatever structure your local government is set up under. You can really uh, change their minds with with a little activism. So. Um, 2601 will allow them to charge. We all know most of them are going to try and charge the maximum fee. Let's see if we can get involved before it gets to that point and convince them otherwise. The last thing we need is a cancer patient who needs to grow more than the legal limit because it's saving his life. Well, the last thing we need is him to not be able to do that because he can't come up with the $250. So again, he's growing that to save his life, not to make a profit. So they need to keep that in mind with some of these fees. But we'll, we'll work on that. Like I said, I'm okay with this bill. Um, and what we're doing here today, we're going around talking to different senators and different House members. And the problems we found in the Skinity plan, we're trying to take each problem to a different person to deal with. Uh, for example, the caregiver section doesn't allow the caregiver to grow on his own property, but instead says the caregiver has to grow on the patient's property. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so we've got a bill we're helping, uh, we've got another representative running a bill that will address that, or an amendment that will address that. So there'll be amendments to 26 or two to the skating plan. There will be amendments, and that's what we're working on is the amendments. The bill itself is gonna move through as is, the amendments are working to make and shape this bill. So get on the phone, get active, make some calls. The language, if you, if you call your senator, okay, not your house, SB 1030, Senate Bill 1030, the language from that needs to die. The title has been stricken, it is sitting dormant waiting to come back and rear its ugly head. That's the bill that has things like, um, the work restrictions, where if you have a food handler's card, you, uh, you're considered a safety sensitive job, therefore you're ineligible to participate in the, in the cannabis program. So that's nuts, that's just nuts. So SB uh, 1030, not HB. I, I talked to some house members earlier and they said they were getting calls yesterday saying kill 1030 and uh, they don't have a House Bill 1030, or at least not one that addresses cannabis. So we need to be, uh, I'll try and be more specific in my videos. We need to be a little more accurate in our phone calls. The good thing is every phone in here lights up and they all know we're paying attention. Even if we don't hit the mark every time, they know we're watching. So that's good. So keep calling. But if we can, let's try and remember House Bills and Senate Bills. So this bill we're looking at now, we're outside the House Rules Committee. This is HB, House Bill 2601. Um, the bill we want stopped in the Senate, that's Senate Bill 1030. So that's what we're on right now. Okay, uh, she's still over there uh, doing her thing. Uh, look for her on the news tonight. And I've got a couple other places to get to here in the building. I'm hoping Eccles will come out here in a minute. Uh, John Eccles, our floor leader, is in this meeting. He's one of the chairs in here. Uh, I'm hoping to get a couple minutes with him on camera when he comes out so we can see where all this is at and he can recap some of what we're working on. So, Okay, folks, that's it for now. I'll check back in a bit. Stay grumpy. Hey, for those of you that don't remember, grumpy is government refusal united many people and we said yes to 788. So. Grumpy is staying active and engaged in your government. Okay, all right, we're not going to wait for everybody to join in. Hey, everybody, it's Uncle Grumpy. I'm back here at the Capitol with our fearless floor leader, John Eccles, and he's got about three minutes, and we need it. So, John, first I want to say thank you. I understand this bill 
2601. Yes, so you just ran through committee. This is the one that will guarantee no more handcuffs. That's right. Get involved if you have less than an ounce and a half. And it's 2614. 2614. 2614. My apologies. Yeah. Now, if if you have more than that, you're still going to be subject to criminal laws. Yes. So keep that in mind, folks. But if you got less than the legal limit, or and you just have your card, that's right. You'll be fine. So and what, we're, what we're trying to do, we're working with law enforcement in this bill. We're like, you know me, I, I try to bring everybody together if I can, and we're going to take some of this money, start using it to shore up the retirement system. And I think it's a great bill all the way around. I really, I think it's going to pass. I'll, I'll see now that it's out of committee. That's when the okay. th those that want to kill it will come out of the woodwork. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I think it's a good one. And I was looking at twenty six oh one here. This is the one that allows these counties to up the limit. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think that's great too. That we, we know that was in 788. Yep. I guess this just puts in an actual it, it, language it, it, we can live that's by. Right. This yeah. will also be for any county issues. So we had talked last week about how it was going to pass some shell bills. Right. This is going to be to deal with any county issues that come up. Also. So does this make it where they can no longer require home growth to get registered with the county? None of that is in there right now. So right now, really, we're getting it out of committee. This is going to be my bill to deal with all county issues. Okay. It's not in there right now. The bill is not in its final form. I mean, anybody that's worked with me knows we're, right. we're still taking I input. I still want people to talk about issues with counties. Okay. We needed a bill. We needed a vehicle during okay. the legislative process. Great. This is wonderful. I can work with this. I'm going to be right with you, Adam. I, and I know you will. Okay. I know you're in a hurry. I'm going to get you later on if I have to show up to your house. And <laughs> I know where he lives. Right. So I'll let you get out here, John. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate I'll see you time. soon. Thank All you. right, folks. I'll check back in a bit. Stay grumpy. Thanks. Hey everybody, it's Uncle Grumpy. I'm back, still here at the Capitol, and once again we bring you the interviews you don't have to wait till 5 o'clock for. We're here with Mark Woodward from the OBN. Mark, thank you for joining us. Good to be back with you. We were sitting around talking outside, and you mentioned some things that uh, I thought these people might need to hear. You want to emphasize on some of what we were discussing? Well, we get a lot of questions uh, about Senate Bill 1446 that passed last year. Um, and we're getting a lot of people calling us saying that they're being told by their doctor that they can no longer continue to prescribe high levels of pain medication uh, for fear that there's something in 1446 that, that could get those doctors in trouble. And, and what we've tried to emphasize to these pain patients when they're calling us is that there's nothing in 1446 that says doctors cannot continue to prescribe what they're prescribing before that law passed. The only difference is that law requires that you have a consultation with the patient, you uh, talk about the risks that could be involved in it, you document and justify why you're continuing to prescribe at high levels. So documentation is a very important part uh, for, for physicians to follow. And thirdly, if it goes more than three months entering into that pain contract with the patient. But other than that, there's nothing in 1446 that says you have to get your patient down from 400 MMEs to, over, to under 100 or 700 MME down to under 100 methadone morphine equivalent. It just, there's recommendations and guidelines nationally that says 90 or below is recommended, but certainly there's physicians out there who understand my patients need much higher than that. And what this bill says is you can continue to prescribe those, but you must document it, have a, those conversations with your patient and if it goes beyond three months of necessary pain medication, enter into that pain contract. So now, they should be fired and losing their, their medica now, medication. Now, 1446, for those of you who don't remember, was the opioid bill that slipped through last uh, year. Around March, it was slipped through when none of us were paying attention. We were trying to get 788 moving. And 1446 took effect November 1st. Um, hundreds of us have fallen victim to the interpretation of 1446 and repeatedly when talking with Mark and others this comes up so it's a recurring thing now the reason why I told him that's the subject I want to talk about with you today that's what I want everybody to hear about is because he said something that was key you guys know for a while we've been doing this uh, the call to action page the Underground Railroad where we had a couple people trying to help people find doctors that uh, would help people that were being kicked off for one reason or another. At the time when we started all that, we thought it was because they were all being kicked off due to their, the medical marijuana card. It was only a month later when we all learned about the effect 1446 was having on all this and how they were intertwined. So Mark had said, you had mentioned some uh, an organization in Tulsa or a hospital in Tulsa uh, that was that you were in contact with, that you knew was working with people. Could you tell these people about that? Because I know hundreds of people in Tulsa right. who call me regularly looking for a doctor. Right. 
Did you tell them who you had talked Absolutely. about? Absolutely. We, we have met with a lot of different medical boards and just physicians individually and talked to them about our concerns that we were getting calls uh, from patients saying that their doctor was afraid of going to jail and being arrested by OBN if they prescribed these high amounts. And so we are trying to get the word out to the physicians that first of all, you're not going to go to jail prescribing those high amounts. You can continue to do what you've always done. 1446 just says to document it, have that pain contract and have that consultation with the patient. During some of those conversations though with physicians, we had a couple of them from the Utica Park Clinic up in Tulsa. One of them uh, is uh, Dr. Dale Derby, who is a former state house member here. Um, during our conversations with them, telling them about some of these phone calls from, from literally crying patients saying, I don't know where to go, I've been fired. Um, they said, please have them call us and we will work with them. They're up in Tulsa, it's the Utica Park Clinic, and, and I know that's a hardship for people to drive from far southern or southwestern Oklahoma, but there is a place people can turn to if they want somebody to talk to about getting the pain medicine they need if they've been fired. Yeah, now I can't guarantee you that these people will work with the within the medical marijuana program, but for those of you, because I, I, again, I know hundreds who have been cut off that have nothing to do with cannabis. Again, this and goes way beyond that. Right. That's why I wanted to bring you on Absolutely. with this particular issue. Again, folks, I know this isn't exactly about cannabis, but we all know they're, they're linked and they overlap enough because most of us are patients and, and like myself, use both. So, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all there. Right. All right, well, uh, Utica, Utica Park Clinic in Tulsa, if you're on that part of the state, any ideas where in Oklahoma City, anything on this area we, where there might be a little more understanding of how the law works? We, we're we not aware of, but there may be some of your viewers out there who, who got fired uh, and they found another physician, so I would certainly encourage them to speak up. Unfortunately, like myself, I had to find another physician, and he said, don't tell anybody because I don't want any new patients. Mm -hmm. So we're having trouble finding some to spread the word out Doctors, there. So. Uh, Dr. Derby up there at the Utica Park Clinic might have some colleagues that he's aware of. So I would There you go. I bet his phone's going to be ringing today. Yeah, that's well, good. They're willing to help, and that's that, that's what patients need to hear. So uh, while we've got you on here, how are things moving from your aspect as far as the medical marijuana program? Anything changed since last well, time we spoke? We kind of hit a landmark uh, this past week. Uh, we hit over 2,000 uh, registrations that have now been approved by the Bureau of Narcotics. We're about right. You mean business, businesses. Right. This would be uh, approximately 1,400 uh, distributors, or excuse me, uh, manufacturers, which would be growers and processors. Mm -hmm. So we're right at about 1,400, and then we are at about right at 16. Uh, 617 dispensaries. So we just passed the 2,000 mark uh, right. this Monday, yesterday, here in Oklahoma. And I know there's a lot that are still going to come over from what we're hearing from OMMA, uh, but uh, they're rolling out. And uh, we've got four licensed laboratories. So if anybody's concerned about testing and who to call, there are at least four labs now that are up and running and say they're ready to accept. Product. And the name of those labs, is that on your site or it, anything? It is, it okay. is, yes. If, if you okay. go to our Bureau of Narcotics website and click on registrations and you just click active registrations, mm -hmm. and then it'll give you what type, whether it's dispensary, grower, click on analytical okay. labs and you'll see uh, four labs on there. And so it, it's going good. It's going as smooth as we can, considering the, the volume that right. has come over since so about September. So wh what is the what is the uh, waiting period now from say uh, the submission of uh, my application if I was going to commercial business before you guys give me my license? Our maximum is three weeks. The only reason it should go beyond three weeks is because there's an issue with the paperwork, and we talk to them and we, we visit with them about what we're missing. Maybe there's a signature, maybe there's a location. They left something blank, but most of them, the backgrounds are getting done and they're approved. Uh, probably within about 10 days is the average. There's okay. very few that even go three weeks. Great. Um, we hit a few down around Christmas when people were off and we couldn't get yeah. any backgrounds done, but there, we're rolling them out now. Now, I, I heard that uh, we have over 65,000, uh, isn't that it, 65,000 patients now? 59,000 today. 59 today? Okay, almost 60,000 patients today. That's a lot. Now, I mention that because I want to get your opinion on right. something. Before all this passed, we all thought when we were comparing, when some of these lawmakers were comparing other states similar to Oklahoma, trying to figure out what the patient count might be, they were comparing it to Arizona usually, and they were coming up with a number that would end up around 150,000 people. It looks to me like we're going to hit that by the summer. So I'm thinking by within a couple of years, we could hit 250,000. 
I think it's going to be considerably larger. What, what do you think? It's possible. I know that some of the numbers they kicked around in the summer and fall were around 81,000, and I guess you're hearing that they may have upped it to around 150. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's difficult to tell. I know there's a lot of people we've talked to who are actually coming here from other states. I spoke to a guy from Michigan who's preparing to move here yeah. um, because uh, just the, the regulatory difficulties. And when he looked at Oklahoma's regulations, he said this is a piece of cake compared to some of the bureaucracy in these other states. And I've heard the same thing. Was this a was this a business a dispensary owner up there? Both. I may have spoke to the same Patient. person. Yeah. Yeah. They, these people reach out to me too, right. and they've been reaching out since before we passed this. Some people wanted to know if they should sell their house, and if I was confident enough that we would pass it, that they were going to sell their house to move to get here in time to vote. Right. I said, don't put that on me. That's a little too much. Right. So. Right. Okay, Mark. Well, I appreciate you coming Absolutely. on. Uh, I'm certainly going to run into you here every week, I imagine. So we'll have more questions Anytime. next week. Anytime. Guys, you got questions for the OBN. Here he is. He's friendly. He's nice. You see, he's human just like us. We can talk to these folks. So get a hold of me. Let me know what your questions are. I'll get a hold of him, and we'll get this taken care of. Okay, folks, that's it from the Capitol. Stay grumpy. I'll see you on the road. We are now. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Uncle Grumpy and Norma. Back at you again. We just walked out of the Capitol. We're in Norma's car. She's giving me a ride to the back 40 where I have to park. I think I'm going to have to get me a handicap sticker. I think you need my, one. My knees don't. I mean, I, she does the stairs. I can't even do the stairs. My knees are so bad. So maybe I need to get me a sticker instead of her. Do we want to tag you? Yeah, we want to tag you. Oh, yeah, there you go. It tagged you. It tagged I'm Norma. Tagged. I think I'm in the second to the last row. So tell them the big news. So, oh, big news. Oh, I met the governor. I did meet the governor. Governor Stitt. Is that how you pronounce it? Stitt? Yes. Mm -hmm. I met the governor. I gave him a card. I told him I would like to have a meeting with him. I'm planning on bringing all 507,000 of you with me. <laughs> if he gives me the meeting. I think if you guys call him and tell him Grumpy needs a meeting... Maybe we can do that. Maybe we can make it happen. He kind of gave me that look like he didn't hear a word I said. But you Sounds know, like a plan. It might work. It I might. think I'm down that oh, way. this one? I think. Oh, no. I'm off it my one. It was the next one. It was the next <laughs> one. I don't know where I'm parked. Anyway, I met the governor, gave him a card, told him I'd like to have a meeting with him. I'd sure love to discuss. Uh, what I want to do is get a sense of how he feels about what's going through the House and the Senate. So we get some ideas to what he's willing to sign and what he's not willing to sign. Um, you know, some of these battles we put up are for things that won't go anywhere anyway. So, yeah, I'm the fourth car in there. I see you. So, um, man, it's a full parking lot today, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All right. So hopefully we can get a meeting like that. But we went and tried to talk to some others. We waited on Scott. Scott, we waited on you. Scott Fettgetter. He was but eating barbecue. We, we didn't you want to interrupt. Away from barbecue. We did, Scott, we did not want to interrupt your meal. I want you to know, Norma and I stood there and watched you eat for 15 minutes. We won't give everybody the details. <laughs> I'm teasing. Anyway, we spoke to his PA and to a couple other PAs, which, as we all know, <coughs> are the people who do the work anyway. So we might have actually accomplished something. I think so. She's a nice lady. Yeah. I like her. Yeah. She was knew, it Deborah? She was, she, no. Well, who, Scott's? Mm hmm Yeah. I think it was Deborah. Yeah. And then we talked to Fricks, also his PA. That was Vicky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't seem to know much about cannabis, but she was nice. She so was. We'll have right. to teach her. She'll know more at the end of the season. Is that where you were still on the chocolate, or was that in Fett No, Getter's that office? was in Fettgetter's okay. office. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Scott, Fettgetter, the barbecue guy. He's got chocolate in his office. Big shocker. <laughs> All right, this is going to get me a nasty phone call from Scott. <laughs> you know I'm only teasing, buddy. All right, so I think that's it for now. You want to go home? We should probably leave. I know. The stuff started falling out of the sky, it and got, nobody told us it was winter. got cold, didn't it? It did. It was warm North this wind. I know. All right, so we're going to go. We're leaving. That's it. We're out of here. Done. Kapook. Out of here. Gone. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. What's tomorrow? I don't know. Let's find out. I have to check okay. the agendas. I just showed you how to do that. I, I know. I already knew how to do that. I just It's easier if you look it up. See? Okay. <laughs> I get it. All right, it. folks. We're going to go. We will work out a plan of attack for tomorrow. We will try and um, decipher some of what happened today. Uh, spend a little time seeing, you know, we heard 
like you said, that one bill has less pages than the last time you saw it. Mm -hmm. So we need to all regroup again tonight and attack this again tomorrow. I'm going to be in town all week so we can okay. be here a few more days. Four so. new people. Uh, talked to some of their legislators and I think they were pleasantly surprised at how they're their neighbors they're yeah just other human beings that live close to you and they happen to yeah. be in office yeah okay that's it for now you want to say it uh, get grumpy oh come on Norma <laughs> stay grumpy see you on the road Bye.